Hello and welcome, it's Pete here and it's another vlog. This time we're looking at a die set, one particular die set from Tim Holtz Christmas collection. Now I know for many of you that is always a highlight of the year, it is for me too. But we're going to be looking at one of the hidden gems of that set and I'm talking about Forest Shadows. I just love this set. There's so much you can do with it. It is so versatile. Whether you use it by itself or you use it with other dies from the collection or from previous collections or indeed from upcoming collections, it is going to serve you well. It's going to stay in your stash. You're going to use it all the time. So let's see how to use it. So today I'm going to be bringing in some distress inks and because I'm using distress inks, I'm going to be using my wonderful Sizzix Silicon Media Mat. Now, I've got a great color blend for today. I'm going to be using Shaded Lilac. I'm going to be using Wilted Violet. I'm going to be using Villainous Potion. And finally, Pick Raspberry. Now, I, the cards I showed earlier, they, they, they were mainly blues, but this this is, we're going purples, we're going with pinks as well. So it just gives it a slightly different vibe. And I want to bring in, to start off with, there are two main dies from this collection. And you can put, you can use them independently, you can use them together. You can use one in front of the other, or indeed you can use the tall of trees behind. There is also this wonderful die which cuts those lovely little stars as well. I'm going to be using this one for now. Um, and what I'm going to do, let's take this, place it on there, and I'm just going to trim that to size. Now, normally, it'd be okay to ink a piece of card this size, but I like to trim it so I know where these trees are going to end up. And I don't want to waste ink on a piece of card that's not going to get used. So there we have it. And I've got to remember to flip that over as well because obviously the die is going to be face down. Now, we'll start off with picked raspberry. It's, it's a lovely, it's a lovely color this. It sits in the middle of the reds, more towards the pink end of the spectrum. And I want to fade this towards the base. So I want to leave that bit white. So let me work on the outside and gradually just bring that in. And that's the secret. Never go directly onto the card. Let's pick up my ink again and just bring it in gradually. So see, it's white towards the bottom, but that pink is just fading up. And you can see what I mean. So it's almost veering into the purple part of the spectrum here, but the, the base is pink. So that's why I found this one of the more versatile distressing colors. Now let's move to Wilted Violet, which is another favorite of mine. This is, this is one of the brighter purple colors. And again, working on the outside, just bringing that in and see how well, see how beautifully it blends with that pick raspberry. And you, you should really, you know, try various blends and even unlikely ones and see where it leads you. You'd be, you'd be surprised with the results, you really will. So there we are, we're blending that. Gradually we want to get a reasonably smooth blend. And then finally, I'm going to come in with the Villainous Potion, the Shaded Lilac. I'm saving till later. And we're coming this much, much darker, deeper color. But when, when most of the ink comes off this, you can blend it into those other two colors. You get a really, really smooth blend. So there, once that is done, what I'm gonna do is take that now. So let's put it against it. Yep, that's kind of where I wanna be. I'm gonna take my mister and just give it a quick pump like that. Maybe one more. I want some bigger spots and I want some smaller spots, but it just breaks it up and you can see the water starting to work there on the distress ink. It's starting to sink in now. At this point, you can take your heat tool or indeed 
You can take a t paper towel, which is what I'm going to do today, but just let it seep in first. Don't do that immediately. And then I'm going to lift that away. And that's perfect. Also, when you're working with a media man, just spritz and wipe. It really is that simple. So now it's time to die cut. But before I do, you want to make sure, you want to ensure actually that that card is bone dry. So I'll take my scissors to the tool and I'm going to use the lower setting here. If you use the high set and always hold it away from the base, otherwise you get it curling up, which you don't want. So work on both sides so that if it does curl up, this will help prevent most of that. So that's now bone dry. I want to get a lovely crisp edge when I'm die cutting. Place the trees there. Now you can imagine if I cut the trees out of white and put it over the top, that would create a great sky, but we're going to look at that in a little while. I'm going to place my die and the trees like so. At the same time, I'm also going to cut some, some little stars for later. So they're both on the cutting mat and simply run that through. Now, if you, want, if you want a better cut, just roll it through twice. That's all you need to do. It's going to cut fine first time anyway, but for those people who maybe put a shim in there with some of the more, these aren't detailed dies, but when you're using detailed dies, you might be tempted to use a shim. I would just run it through two or three times. That's my preferred method. And you get a lovely, lovely clean cut. So let's put those stars to one side. They'll be ready for later. And let's take a look at my trees. Let's see how that's come out. Wow, perfect. And I'm even gonna use the die. Instead of reaching for my die pick, I'm just gonna pop those little bits out with the tip of my die. So that, that's absolutely gorgeous. That's really nice. So pop the cutting plates to one side. Now, with this, there's one more thing I want to do. So, there's my die cuts, and I'm just going to take it off camera, and I'm using a spray box, it's just a cardboard box, and I'm spraying that with spray adhesive. Remember, always try, where possible, to do that in a well-ventilated room. Not so bad when you're just doing a little bit like that, but uh, obviously, if you're using a lot of spray adhesive, we do have to be careful. And I'm taking some Sizzix glitter. Now this is, this is just white glitter and it doesn't want to give up its secrets, this one. So I'm just going to pick away at the side. This should be, this should be a bit, this, this is always, this is always, when we're doing, when we're doing live things like this, this is the thing you have nightmares about, that you pick up your glitter and it's not ready to go, but there we are. So I'm going to sprinkle that on and you can see that I'm using this tray. This is what we call a Sizzix funnel tray. And what that does, whether you're using glitters, sequins and beads, or embossing powders, it allows you to collect all that leftover. And there's a little you can see there. You simply unscrew that and tip it straight back into your jar. So there's never any waste. If there's, if there's any excess, we just take, take a brush and brush it back into the pot and it's good to go for next time. And there we have it. That's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, so it's, uh, it's knocked back the colors slightly and that's good because it's slightly more subtle, but we're still getting that dark to light vibe going on. But when the light hits this, wow, spectacular. Makes such a difference. So let's pop that to one side now. Of course, we talked about forest shadows and we talked about how it can work with other dyes and one of the other dyes I had in mind this is from Tim Holtz Halloween this year is moonlight now moonlight comprises two moons two different sizes uh, you get the outer and you get the detail dye and of course there's loads of bats we're not going to be using bats on our Christmas make I hope you don't mind but this you know whether it's spring autumn wherever you set it behind trees or it's just it's just a wonderful dye and it's another one you're going to be using over and over again so I'll place that down there because I'm going to cut I'm going to cut the uh, 
This is going to be my detail. I'm going to be cutting that from white. And you can see I've already pre-inked this. I simply put some ink on my media mat, spritzed it and dipped the card into that. So that's going to be my base color. And again, I'll take my platform, place the dies exactly where I want them and run them through. Let's bring my machine so you can see that. So that's the base. So the, the other one, the next one, the one with all the detail, this is going to just sit over the top of that. I'll just pop those little bits out with the end of my tweezers. Wow, really, really cool there, this. I think it's been a favorite of everybody because they can see the potential for this going forward. They can see that it's one that's going to pop up time and time again in all their makes all year round. So there we are, we'll put one on top of the other and just letting that pink come through. And of course, these, these, are, these are not round, they're not completely round, they're slightly offset. So you do need to get it in the right place. And that is gonna sit behind our trees. But before we complete that, we need to create the background on our card. Now this, this is my base card today. You can see Winter Wishes printed at the bottom there. Use whatever stamp you prefer. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ink onto this and I am gonna ink directly onto the card. I know what I said before about not going direct onto the card, but we have to be careful. We have to be subtle when we are doing that. And I'm gonna start with shaded lilac. So rather than use a blue, and I'm very, very, very gentle and I'm increasing the pressure because I want a subtle background. I don't want anything too heavy. You can see there, it's barely there, but when, when you put a piece of white card against that, you can see the color starting to appear. And I think that's the trick, is building this up gradually, not rushing it, not being too eager, too anxious. Again, you see the second application there, it's increased the intensity. And we're just gonna keep going and we're gonna keep adding and again, start off light and build it up. So let's move from the center now out towards the edges. And you can see because, because I'm starting off with the intensity on the middle, I can then fade that out. And this one is, this is shaded lilac, as I said. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely blue uh, towards, more towards the purple end of the spectrum. And that's why it works so well with the next color I'm going to use, which is the pick raspberry again. Incidentally, uh, the tool I'm using, this is from the Sizzix multi-tool. This is the handle and this is the blending head which comes with it. It's, it's, it's a lovely tool. It's a more ergonomic way of blending. You're not, you're not over the top. It's, it's a natural kind of position for your hand to be in. Because obviously we're used to using a pen on a daily basis or a pencil. And this is kind of intuitive because it's the kind of thing we've been doing since we were children. So there we are, blending that together. And see how beautifully that blends and fades in with that shaded lilac. Now, at this point, so this is where, you can see this is where my trees, my trees are gonna sit over the top of that. But before I do that, there is one more thing I want to do. I'm gonna take some water, but this time, I'm gonna spritz directly onto my media mat, like so. And I'm gonna place this card face down, put my hand over it and lift. And you can see, it's created that really cool mottled effect. It's completely random. You, you just don't know how that's gonna end up. You really are in the lap of the gods with that one. But you know, it can throw up some really surprising results. And it just adds a little, something, something quite different 
to just that blended effect. If I take, actually, let's try that off. And then I'll come back in with my spritzer. So that's partially dry. And while it's partially dry, this is the best time to go in with my paper towel. And I spritz that a little bit with more water. And also, I'm going to apply some ink to my medium mat. Now I'm going to pick up that ink, but I'm going to use I'm going to use a palette knife, and this comes from the mixed media set, which is an addition to a multi-tool. This is one of the two palette knife heads. I want to set my card like that and just pick up a little on the end and I'm going to flick that onto the card. It's a great way of controlling this technique which would be otherwise random. It just helps you get the accuracy. So the more that you put on it, the bigger the splatters are going to be. And there we are, that's all I need. That's as far as I want to go. And again, we're using the media mat, so I simply wipe away any excess. And that's, that's the background for my car. Now, I'll just switch that out, see how easy it is to change the heads on this tool. It's uh, really changed the way I work it. Really. So we'll put that to one side for now. Now, of course, when you're using water, on cardstock, it's inevitable that you're gonna get this happening. But you don't have to worry about that because what I do, when I've got a project like this, obviously, sometimes I'll let it air dry, sometimes I will use my heat tool. But just by placing a book on the top of that, once it's dry, place a book on the top and you'll find it flattens out perfectly. So don't, don't despair if it starts to crease like that, because it's, it's very, very easy to overcome. There's my base card. And remember, we've got, well, we've got three separate elements actually to attach here. The first of which being that moon. Now remember, we die cut the two parts of the moon and that is gonna sit somewhere like that. And you can see why I didn't ink the top one. I want the contrast, I want that white coming through. And then next up, we want to place our lovely trees. But first things first, let's take some PBA, use uh, whichever, whichever adhesive you prefer. We've all got our own favorites. So I'll pop the moon there. Now for the, for the trees themselves, I'm gonna use 3D foam pads. So just pop a couple there. You want, a, you want at least three or four to make sure that this isn't gonna move around. If, if the, for the tall bits as well, you can trim these to size. Use the foam tape, it's absolutely ideal for that, but I've already cut some down to size for you here. So there we are, we want that around there, just above our sentiments. So we want that sitting proud. And then finally, if I apply some PVA to my media mat, which is so much easier for this application, I can take my lovely stars. Remember those stars that we cut earlier? I'm going to pop one there. So, so now with, with stars, I've got no real defined plan as to where I'm going to put them. I'm just seeing what feels right, the, the kind of balance that I'm, that I'm looking for. So I, I like two together of different sizes like that. And maybe I'll take a medium size star and come out around there. And maybe, maybe one of the smaller ones. So again, we've got a variety of sizes. Same shape, just different sizes. And I'm feeling that we need something in that area as well. So it is, it is about getting that balance. But at the end of the day, it's whatever works for you. If it looks right, it is right. And there we are, that's, that's our card almost done. But I want you to look at the contrast between that 
and this card. So that's my, this is the original. This is the one that I did earlier. And this is the one that we've just done. So very different, or slightly different colors, but a whole different vibe. Uh, there's one, there was one other thing that I just wanted to show you. Another way of using these before we move on. Now, remember the, the inked uh, trees that I did? I've just done this background. And I'm going to die cut that with, with a large framelit circle. That's a Sizzix framelit die. Uh, I think there are eight in this set, if I'm not much mistaken. It's probably the most used set in my snatch, to be honest with you. I always go back to circles, you know, basic shapes. We'll wind that through. And there is one more cut because even though that would be that would be a great serves a great background. You could also cut a really cool moon out of that. But what I want to take is the second of the two of the three dies, I should say. And I want to cut into it like so. Now I could cut one in white and just put it over the top. You can see it looks spectacular just there as the die itself. But I'm gonna crop this down. I'll just make sure I get it in the right place. And, and in truth, again, there is no right or wrong. It's, it's all very subjective. It's all entirely up to you. It's your creation at the end of the day. So don't let me tell you how to do it. Well, we'll run that through like that. So again, if you want to go twice, you can. If you want peace of mind that you're going to get a perfect cut, that's not a problem. But once should be ample with these. There. Wow. How about that? Just that by itself. And don't forget, we've, we've got the other bits as well. You've got the trees there. But just by putting this like that above that sentiment, sometimes keeping it simple is what we need to do. That's all we need. And let me show you a good example of that here, done in blues. And you can see with the circle, I've, I've also, I've inked around the bottom there. I've created a stencil and inked around the bottom to finish that off. It's entirely up to you, however you want to do that. But let's bring in some of the rest. Here's the one that we did earlier. And finally, the card using both of these together. Uh, it's a really great set. As I said, very, very versatile. It's the sort of thing, you know, an autumn night, change, change the colors to browns and oranges. You know, you, you could do this. It could be spring, it could be a background. There could be flower silhouettes in the foreground. It's a great foundational piece. It's one you'll return to time and time again. And it's one I know that when Tim is thinking of his next collection, he will have this firmly in mind. It's, it's one of those, one of those, just one of those great, great die sets. That's why it's going to be the first vlog that I'm doing. That's why I love it. Uh, there will be more vlogs. And of course, if you want to find out more about the uh, Christmas collection from Tim, then go to timholz.com or sizzix.co.uk or sizzix.com, wherever you find your information or YouTube. Yeah, YouTube as well. He will be presenting this. He will be showing what his makers have made. He will be telling you more about the die than you could ever imagine, certainly more than I can. Um, so go and enjoy that. Uh, thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this little card make. Uh, my name's Pete, and I'll see you again soon.